Hi there everyone, my name's Simon. Um, the other day I went out and bought a Korg Nano Control 2, um, a MIDI controller from Korg, which is good for a control surface for Pro Tools or a door of your choice. And I plugged it in, installed all the drivers, and and the USB MIDI driver and everything, and after downloading and installing all the updates and everything, um, the Korg software is showing that the thing's either not plugged in or not installed correctly. So I'm going to try and show you how to fix that. I um, I found a bit of a solution, a bit of a help from a, a Microsoft forum, but it was a bit generic. I went looking about MIDI devices, not specifically the Korg, so if it's a bit hard for you to find, um, this hopefully should be a bit easier. Okay, so what you've got to do is you've got to make sure that... Um, You've uninstalled all the um, all the drivers that you've already tried. Obviously, that's why you're here because nothing's worked. Um, so what you've got to do is you've got to uninstall those. Uninstall the Korg USB MIDI driver. Uninstall the Korg editor, the control editor, and you've got to um, do a bit of registry stuff, which I'll show you in a second. Um, okay, so what I'm running is I'm running. Uh, an HP, Windows 7 obviously, i7, 8 gig of RAM, and I've got Pro Tools 10 and Reaper on here. Yeah, there's Pro Tools down the bottom there and Reaper there. But um, what we've got to do now is, um, okay, so what you've got to do is basically you've got to download all the most up-to-date drivers, which you've probably already done. And also a good thing to have is a program called uh, MIDIOX, which is just in here. MIDI OX, there it is. Um, it's pretty easy to um, to find. You just Google it, download the most recent installer, and that's just like tells you whether MIDI's going in and out of your computer. And I'll show you how that works later. So what we're going to do first is after you've uninstalled all those things, um, go to the Start menu, type Reg Edit, it's for Registry Edit, and that's it up there. So click on that. Um, it's it, I've tried these um, edits. I mean, I know a lot of people are scared about touching the registry on a computer, and I was too, but um, I've got it on some pretty good, um, like the Microsoft Forum, obviously, pretty good authority that that's okay. So what we've got to do, and I've done it on this machine and my other machine as well, so it really works fine. So you probably have something that looks like this. So you go to the H key, local machine, um, go to software and down to Microsoft and in Microsoft go down to <coughs> Windows NT wherever that is there it is and in Windows NT go to drivers 32 okay so if you can see here I've got MIDI 1 and MIDI 2 over here at um, one of them's got um, WD that's like Windows Media Audio, and this one's called the Korg, so that's obviously my thing. That's because I haven't deleted this registry. I've only uninstalled the programs to show you. But what I'll do is, just for the purpose of this, um, you could have MIDI 1 through to 9. Um, deleting them will just delete a driver, and worst case scenario is that when you plug in the devices that you've deleted the driver for, it'll just install the driver again. No biggie. I've done it with all sorts of things. My digital audio converter and all that sort of thing then and, and this mic even that I'm using now it's working fine so if you grab them and you delete them you sure you want to delete this yes and again with that one I'm pretty sure that one there is one as well um, but you don't need to delete that because that's, I'm pretty sure that was my sound card but it, it, all the problem is is that um, too many of the MIDI um, channels are filled up and the Korg software doesn't recognize it after it gets to about channel 10 that's been filled up so that's why the Korg's not working so what we'll do now that we've deleted that um, oh by the way I haven't got my Korg plugged in either um, so that that helps okay so what we do next um, after you've done that is you install everything again so first you plug your Korg back in like so Listen to that. There's, there's my Korg plugged back in. Now that'll install the generic Windows driver um, in here somewhere. I think it's already done it. But um, now I'm going to go to my audio downloads. 
and I'm going to get the uh, the con the bit the USB MIDI driver. Where is it? Korg USB MIDI. That's it, isn't it? I'll just run that. And now that all those MIDI channels are freed up, this will the Korg will be installed on the uh, on the second or third channel, depending on how many devices you already had plugged in that got reinstalled straight away. And um, but yeah, it should um, work fine after you install this all again. But I'll yeah, you know, I'll just show you how that works. So once you've installed this, um, the uh, once you've installed this, all these things, that's all done. But now what we've got to do is we've got to go into the Korg. Korg, there we are. USB MIDI driver tools. We've got to click on this one, and okay, so that's it says it has both these things here filled in. That means there's a driver installed, and you've got to make sure this is set to both, not 64 bit on, or 32 bit only. But I'm on 64 bit, obviously, Windows 7. Um, okay, so that says it's all plugged in there, but you probably find it's not installed properly. So go back into that Korg uh, folder and click on this one, install Korg USB MIDI device and that will um, tell you to install the driver for the, the proper driver for Korg to replace the Windows one and you heard that noise, that's the uh, the new driver being installed and turned on so okay now I'm going to install the, the Korg edit, the control editor again and once that's done I can um, show you how to set it all up in Pro Tools or Reaper. I'll do both, and um, I'll do Pro Tools first. So I'm gonna just click Next, install it all as usual. It won't be too long here, I hope. All right. Now, if you go back into the the Reg Edit when this is done. I'll just show you. There we are, all done. Now, if you go back into the registry, yes, um, let's see, we can see MIDI 1 here is installed it again, and it's the Korg. Look at that. Um, so now we've got the proper driver, not this Windows Media Audio generic driver that's being in there. So that'll be the problem. Now, if you open the control, the Korg control editor that you've just installed, Freshly, look, it's all come up. Wonderful, great. So it's uh, con before you would have gotten a list. I'm sure you know that says nothing's connected. So just click OK, and look at that. We can go through all this. I've got mine set up to be a Pro Tools controller. So I'll just get out of that. No, don't want to save the changes. And just check. Ah, oh, Pro Tools down here. All right, so I open Pro Tools. Now I'm not sure if um, I've cleared the settings, but I'll just show you the menu. I went to clear all the settings before, so it looked like I was doing it fresh, but I think I forgot to do it in Pro Tools, I only did it in Reaper. So once this opens, we should be right to go. Alright, so what I'm actually running is I've got um, a Focusrite Scarlet 8i6 um, as my digital audio converter and default Windows sounds and Pro Tools hardware setup as well. Um, so it's working fine with that as a second MIDI device. Um, I plug a keyboard into that. Um, so there's no problems there. Um, in fact, Korg say that it should work with multiple other Korg devices and other MIDI devices and I haven't had any problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this random mix project I've got going on and hopefully this doesn't take too long yeah that, it works really well the control too as a uh, as a control surface i've really enjoyed using it the um the pan knobs aren't amazing um they tend to have very jittery values and by the time you get back to the middle the actual physical knob isn't at the middle it's a bit weird so you've got to get used to that All right, so we've got our got our whole um, we've got all our whole audio thing here, and um, see this blue lines around here means that the uh, 
see I haven't cleared the settings but the blue line here indicates that the uh, that the controller is working so that's what Pro Tools does to show you that the uh, where the thing is and if you press okay anyway back to this so you go setup peripherals which are the uh, little things here and you go MIDI controllers and drop down here go QE human, in, human interface controller thing then receive from that wouldn't have been there before but then you go in there nano control and send to nano control as well that should be there now that you've installed everything correctly and you can change the color if you really want to okay now if you use your uh, buttons it should work fine see I've moved, used the track bank move buttons and it's moved those blue line the blue outlines down moving along the eight my sets of tracks there use the um, the the controls there I've got a um, you see the volume here that's my slider doing that love it absolutely love it fantastic stuff works really well and the automation doing automation with one of these is just fantastic all right so I'll get out of this and you can um, do the rest I'll show you oops um, I'm not sure what that is close the program All right, into Reaper. Just uh, open a random one, old, old thing here. Now I have cleared the settings on Reaper, so it shouldn't do anything funny. Okay, and my little Reaper is not free. Yeah, Reaper isn't free. I'm planning to buy it sometime soon, but yes, options, preferences, and you go down here to plugins and then right at the bottom there's control surfaces and you've just got to add a new one click on the drop down um, unless you've actually got one of these I know it's called a Mackie control compatible thing but it's actually a partial Huey because it doesn't have all different options so Huey and go the nano control in and the nano control out and this track offset here that um, that will, if you leave that at zero, it will actually leave your first fader um, so that it um, offsets all the tracks by one. So you've got to actually set that to one because if you do zero, your first fader is useless. So set that to one and click OK. And if you go OK, um, look at that, working marvelously. Just if you, yeah, if you have more than one track, click like that, they all move. But that's my first slider, my second slider moving there pan knob see that it doesn't turn all the way to the right and then it'll go 100 percent and then you can turn it back but it doesn't like going from the center round you've got to do it backwards for some reason but yeah that's fine all working well all right if you have any problems with that just uh send me a, a message put a comment down below on the video or um, even if you've got a really weird problem, uh, make a video, just do a screen capture, and I'll have a look at that and get back to you. Yeah, so I hope that helps. Um, that's um, pretty much all I can think of to say. Yeah, thanks for watching, and um, like it if it helped you, and uh, subscribe if you really feel like you want to. I mean, I haven't really gotten many of the other videos, but yeah. So there we are, Nano Control 2, problem solved. Actually, I was going to show you MIDIOX, wasn't I? I was going to show you MIDIOX, wasn't I? Okay, so I'll just open MIDIOX. You can install it, it's pretty pretty straightforward. You go Options, MIDI Devices, and you've got to select the Nano Control and not have any others there. And it should come up in here if it's all working fine. So just click OK, so it says Open and closed MIDI input and output that's important it's got to have input and output otherwise the buttons will never turn off alrighty so if you just move one of the sliders you can see wow that's a lot of a uh, lot of data happening there press one of the buttons do a pan knob they've all got weird names like this sustain and pedal soft and things but you can tell that all the buttons are working 
because that's got a MIDI in and out. All right, so that's how you tell whether it's worked. Um, heads up, um, the in Pro Tools, the markers and the track bank things work fantastic the way I set them up. Um, the, the, you know, the little dialog box comes up in Pro Tools though. It says um, like it's not a proper controller and it's not configured properly and all that sort of thing. Um, it does work fine. So just click the little do not show again box and that should be fine. In Reaper, um, the set marker buttons don't work and neither do the fast forward and rewind buttons, which is a little bit annoying, but um, it's, it's not too bad. Alrighty, that's all I can think of for now. Um, yeah, so hope you hope that helped you. Um, I'm Simon, and thanks for watching.